Okay, Buenos Aires part two. Um, talking about sort of the structure of the Mundial and how it how it goes and some of the problems. So basically there are two competitions in the Mundial de Tango. The first one is the um, Tango de Pista. Mm -hmm. Now it's called Tango de Pista. Before it was called Tango de Salon. So it's a little more open, broad. Abroad. And, uh, abroad, no, broad. Broad. So there, the rules that were there before about not lifting your legs and all these kinds they of other things, they have changed. So you, it's a more open, you can do more stuff. That's the first thing. Um, and then the second competition is the stage competition. And there are a couple dances of choreography. And you can change the choreography between the different parts of the competition if you want to, but most people um, practice the choreography and they have it and they dance it for the full time. So I think we should talk about the, uh, the salon first. yeah, we should have the Salon Championship and then the stage. So the Salon Championship is basically divided into three separate parts. First is and the... And you can almost say that there are three different competitions. Yes. Um, so there is the qualifying competition, and Which this year today's. I think there were 420 competitors or something like that, 412. And it was judged by four groups of judges who saw, I think, I don't know, uh, four, tan four groups, four rondas of dancers each. And each round of dances about ten dancers. And um, there were four groups of judges, which they were uh, four to five judges, I believe. I think five. Five judges. Yeah. And so what what basically happened in the qualifying is that not all judges saw all people. Basically, every judge saw only half of the competitors. If not quarter. And s no, only half. But not quarter. Half. Okay. So each judge saw half of the competitors, and basically the same two groups of judges saw the same half of the people. And um, that is already problematic because <coughs> of this. A tango dancing is not standardized. What does that mean? That means that there's no rule book of how, you combine how things, the how technique you of tango should be. And so pretty much all judging is to some extent subjective, meaning that I like your style or no, I, don't like. I don't like your style. And um, for some people, for example, uh, using the heel, stepping with the heel like this is not considered correct. And so if they see a competitor who is beautiful musicality, does everything else great, and he steps like this with the heel, they will deduct, mm. deduct points from them. Um, and so basically you have... And with that there are many different things. Many. It's just an example, like some yeah. people, they like the embrace that is down here, and they, they wouldn't like that you're up. The hand of the, of the follower, if it's here, here, there, there are all these things that for them they're considered more tango or how, whatever they... Yeah. Think about it. So that's one pro one problem is that there are no standards and judges judge subjectively based to their based according to their taste based on their taste. So that's one problem, and that problem is sort of um, multiplied by the idea that um, judges are human beings. And a lot of these judges are, you know, and, and Tango is a small community. And so basically there are always some type of relationship uh, between, inevitably, between the judges and most of, you know, some of, if, if not most of the, the competitors. And from very brief experience that I personally have had judging a Tango championship, um, we did this in Manila in a, in a small, really regional, small, competition. small regional competition. I can honestly tell you that it's really, really difficult to not uh, include in judging of the person when you're looking at them, the experience you have had with them. So if somebody takes a class with you um, and you give them corrections and you see that according to your own idea their tango improves, 
it's really difficult to not have that somewhere in the back of your mind when you're looking at them uh, perform or dance at the competition. Um, so not only do we have this issue of sort of no standards, no real standards and everything being uh, <coughs> subjective, we also have the additional problem of this personal relationship which makes it even more um, subjective. And problematic. And, and problematic. Um, so these judges that are in the first part of the qualifying, uh, they are only there for the qualifying. They don't judge again. So once the competitors have passed the qualifying from like 400 or something, it comes down to 80 or 70, 72. And then to those 72 are added winners of like the, the regional, regional championships and I think some foreign championships, like the Russian championship and London and I think the some European others, some Europe. other foreign, no, I think the Europeans go directly to the final. Oh, okay. Some, some other foreign and city championship and so on. And then a whole new group of judges comes in and in the semifinal, the good thing is it's the same judges that see everybody. Uh, I think it's probably super tiring <laughs> to yeah. sit there. But again, think about it. You had a two days of the qualifying, right? You have different judges that maybe the, is not the same judges that they see you both days. How whatever your scores were to go into the semifinal, they mean nothing. Once you pass. Once once you pass. Let's say if you were there and yes, you're really happy about it, only be happy that you pass. Because when you go into the next one and then you have different judges in the semifinal, even if it's the same judges to see everybody, that score can change from trust me, and this happened this year, from being the first one into don't even passing into the, into the final. Yeah. One of the guys who was first, it was the, her score. It was better than everybody else in the qualifying, and he didn't even pass the semifinal. To the, the semifinal. So that's how crazy drastically can change. And uh, just to go back to the qualifying, if you have you know the same two groups of judges judging basically half of the competitors. If one of those groups of judges is more generous on average with the scores than the other group, people who they happen to see will just by like a stroke of luck have better scores. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so now they're in the semifinal, everybody sees you. After the semifinal, um, something like 38 uh, go on to the final. And in the final, there are or 39, and in the final, there are 40. And there's, so that means that there's uh, four rondas um, oh. in the final. And the judges for the final are not the same judges um, as in the semifinal. And um, again, you know, it's the same problems like in the qualifying. People know you, people are friends with you, people teach you, and the same problems with objectivity and so on. Um, of course, yes, it's kind of like a lottery, right? And most people are separated by tenths of a point between each other. Um, so the politics of the whole thing are kind of extreme, you know, depending on who chooses the judges, that's sort of the stream of tango that is predominant um, in, in the judging. So for example, in the stage championship this year, Many judges were from Forever Tango. Did that influence how the the stage championship went? I don't know. Maybe it's possible. Um, it would be definitely different if maybe judges who were mostly from, let's say, Tango Por Dos were chosen because maybe their yeah. eye is, it will be different. Is, is different. And um, the crazy thing about this, and it's not to talk about, bad about this, but this, the, like I mentioned in the previous video, this also become a business and it's a good business for many people if you are a judge or you are a coach and eventually you become a champion right um the problem with this is like i mean there are many people really crazy about competing and they're like will do anything to be able to have a good score and uh, we know for a fact that there's a lot of people that what they do is that they go two months or one month before the, the, the championship 
and they take classes with many people. Uh, not just many people, if you know, they find out, uh, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's harder to find out who are going to be the judges. So they go and they take classes. And like we said before, imagine if you have one of your students that are competing and you have to judge. The most correct thing will be like, sorry, I cannot judge, they're my students. But sometimes it's hard because with years, if you travel, if people come to you, I mean, you will have many students. That means that maybe you will never be able to be a judge. So at the same time, it's some work that you cannot do that give you prestige and etc. 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 But this is also problematic because the Tango community is so small. So if these people who are like at the peak of their careers or who are who are you know who have had long careers and they have been teaching and traveling and doing all that, if they are not judging, who will judge? That. So it's a super difficult situation. Situation. So obviously you know, this is like, uh, like we say, it's like a game with no rules, but at the same time, if you know a little bit about some of the few rules that uh, is there, you're going to try to use all your, how do you say, all your advantages, all your weapons to be able to, you know, if you're really, again, if you're, your only idea is to win, then you'll do whatever is possible to you to win. And sometimes there are some things that I don't think they are, that is nice. You know, that is uh, correct, that is appropriate, that is, um, I don't even know how to say, that is like, um, I know for some people, they, while the championship is happening, they get, uh, you know, you can message any of the judges on Facebook now, it's, it's really easy, they will get invited to go to either their school or to get the contact for work, you know, it's like a way to, sorry, but it's like to, how do you say to bribe, bribe them? Yeah, maybe bribe is a yeah. It sounds really strong. A strong word, but uh, but is to make themselves known. Here I am. Here, here I, mean, I, know, I exist. Look at me more. Look at me I mean, just that more. could be that can help a little bit. Can help. So there's a lot of things like that that, that happens, and uh, again, uh, we have you know you hear many different things. Things are true. Things are not true because there is, a, a, how do you say, a rivalida between the... Yeah, so this is like a difficult thing, you know, like there's an issue with, with this sort of, um, I, I don't think it's nepotism, nepotism is not the right word, but there's an issue with this intermingling between judges as teachers and, and colleagues, yeah. and it's a really difficult problem to solve because in the end those are the people who are the most qualified to judge, but they're also the people who are teaching the competitors, so... I don't know how that problem can be solved, but it's it's definitely a problem um, yeah. in the championship. That's the first thing. The second problem is sort of people say, well, you know, there's no criteria, and you know, these this guy's judging like this, and I'm judging like this, and I can't believe he let this guy pass. You know, he was you know his elbow was way back here, and his shoulder was all up, and that was terrible. How did he pass? Um, so some people advocate standardization of some sort or finding some type of um, ways to kind of make criteria for how to how to judge and this is also super problematic because first of all um, you know if you conceive of style as technique then if somebody's not dancing in your style they're using incorrect technique um, that's the first thing the second thing is even if you let's say even if we let's say agree on technique um, it's really difficult to sort of see sometimes technical aspects of somebody's dance because you're not actually in the lead and follow relationship that is happening. Um, some things you can see. Some things you can see, but some, some things you have to things, feel. Yeah, it's really and hard to it's, that's, that's really, really hard. And it's really yeah. funny, you know, sometimes the most... The people who are m most interested in standardizing according to like criteria based on style tend to be the most traditional, traditionally oriented tango dancers who who dance more let's say in traditional styles. And and for me, the beauty of tango and what makes tango so unique is that you know traditional tango is so far from being from being standardized. I mean, literally every guy like every older milonguero you talk to when they talk about tango they say well this is my step and this other guy did this step like his step like this and 
they're like steps <coughs> called by people's names. So people were really interested in being individual and being unique and being not different. copying anybody. Nobody wanted to copy anybody. And so to think that like, to think that like standardizing something that in its origin was so unique and different um, and non-standard seems to be really contradictory to what to what some of this like championship standardizing ideas are um, and so I don't know you know it would be definitely easier to judge if there were criteria but if those criteria are based on okay everyone should step with the toe and not with the heel then again we're like quarreling the idea of, of, of tango into something that's super restrictive and against the spirit of, of what tango dancing is. So there are a lot of issues um, with the championship that let's like, you know, you're trying to judge the unjudgeable, like mm -hmm. you're depending on the taste of the person who's watching. And so that all of that combined with this three completely separate juries can basically mean that you know um it's it's a lottery and if you pass from one stage to the next you should be happy and if you pass into the final uh, in the end whatever place you get is less indicative of how good of a dancer you are and you you know it's just more indicative that some some group of people looking at you reached a uh, um, like an average consensus that you are among the top 40 salon dancers who competed that year. That basically is what it, what it comes down to. So if you don't place in the top five, you know, don't feel bad about it. It's, um, we can say, I mean, we stay uh, this year, we watch mostly in, in stage, we watch everybody, every, every, every single, and really like even for the ones that they pass to the finals i mean like you could think just a few exceptions any of those couples they could be top five any of them yeah and but this again even i think with the stage it's even more uh, controversial or like you know how it should be because it's a little bit more open yeah. than than salon but let me, let me finish that on salon oh i'm sorry go ahead and so basically for Salon, you know, um, don't take this course to heart. Maybe some, a, a way to kind of mediate it would be to average <coughs> scores from semifinal and the final yeah. and maybe weigh them a little bit more towards the final. But, you know, when judges know you or they're your teachers, it's, they're not judging you, them, how, like these people, how they dance on that day. It's they're sort of judging the whole trajectory, everything that they know about that person, all of that stuff is involved. Yeah. Um, so sometimes, you know, the person who wins, they're not, they're not being judged on how they dance that night. They're sort of being awarded for all of the dancing they've been doing in their whole career. And sometimes, it, you know, it, it's okay to recognize that also. But, um, and this is more for organizers than anybody else. Um, just because somebody wins the championship, does not mean that they're the best tango dancer. Um, and if somebody is 40th in the championship, it doesn't mean that they are the 40th best tango dancer. And I understand something. Many of the people, if not everyone, that compete in the championship, they have coaches. If no one, many. And I'm not saying, I'm not taking credit for the dancers, because the dancers do a lot of work, they invest a lot of money, a lot of time. But at the same time, at the and they end, dance, and they dance. Yeah. They are the ones that <laughs> go the there. Ones. They do everything. Yes, but n not to take credit from their coaches, because they are the ones that they they help them to get where they have to get to. So lately, it's crazy because, like a champion, um, now uh, is sometimes know, better known than the person who coached them. Yes. And, and, and we're talking about, we have no problem with that, on, on the sense that, I mean, like, for us, we don't care. But, like, I know people, like, super famous people, like, that they should be the top, the top of the top. And for us, they are, it's just they're not known for many people and mostly the new generations. And this for, for many for many different reasons. This has to do because of 
all their teachers don't talk about them, even if they yeah. train with them. They don't give them, them credit. They don't give them credit, even if they train with them, or they have career from them, and all these things. And also because of the championship, that they only shows the champion. But they don't talk about their coaches, who did the choreography, who helped them, who... Many, many of these things. <clears throat> yeah, so just if, you know, if you're organizing something, um, like, uh, don't, don't uh, deify the, the, the winner of the, of the championship. Um, yes, of course, they deserve all the credit. They, yes. They've won. But they're not gods. They're, you know, the guy who came in 40th is probably also a really, really good dancer. And, uh, you know, give people a chance uh, because um, sometimes you might be, you might be surprised. Yes. Maybe sometimes the quality of the guy who came in 40 is better than the quality yeah. of the guy who came in and also second or third the, uh, or fifth or whatever. This is my own personal opinion. Oh, sorry. So judge by quality not by some arbitrary medal. Uh, this is my personal uh, opinion. If you're a champion, uh, just remember that you won that year. That doesn't mean that you're the best of the world. And if you're a champion, and you're a salon champion, and you can only dance uh, that type of style, and you don't know how to dance a waltz, or you don't know how to dance a milonga, or you cannot do other things, then I would really think about like how, I mean, how is that name of a champion is, uh, how do you say, uh, is given to you. You won that year for whatever circumstance, and for sure there are some good circumstances that happen. It's just like, uh, if you win, and this is for the people that want to compete, if you win, trust me, that doesn't mean that you are the best of the world that year you are the best of the people that compete. There are many other people that they have no desire to compete, that maybe they are better, or that they know different things, or maybe you, even your teachers. And so, you know, like, be humble about it, because, uh, you know, there are many champions that, that we know that they won, and then uh, for one year, you know that there are many places, and next year they disappear. Yeah, but I mean, the, you know, the, the sort of, um, you reap what you sow, I guess, you know, if, if you're, if you're, the championship, winning the championship only opens the door, but then you have to back up that they, All of them. and of course it's easier because people implicitly trust that if you've won, that you're, you're great. Yes. Uh, at least dancer. I don't know about teacher. Um, and, and this is the other thing, talking about the teaching part of it. Again, many of these people that they went to the ch championship, not everyone, but many of them, they are people that they won. This is, again, this is a, a big door to, to the world, so you start working better, you can make some money, and people get to know you, right? But many of these people, they only train on dancing. They haven't trained on how to teach. So sometimes that they're being hired as teachers over other people that they have, for sure, more experience than them, it's a little bit, um, uh, how do you say, it's, it's, it's not real. And it's really sad because I understand that, again, it's a business and this is a business for the organizers too, and they have to sell you know, the classes. And sometimes the, the classes, unfortunately, they are not sell by the quality of the teacher, if you know, by the label of the dancer. And this is really sad because we know many people in Buenos Aires that many people in Europe, they have no idea who they are on the US or in Japan or wherever you go. And they're amazing teachers and amazing dancers and they're just not there. They, you just don't see them for whatever reason. And it's not because they don't want to compete or, 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 or they cannot compete. It's just like sometimes they, they didn't have the opportunity to be able to, you know, uh, to show themselves so then you get to know them. Yeah. So, I know. So that's that with... Uh, that's that about Salon. Um, but, yeah, interesting. A lot of very interesting consequences can happen from the, from the competition. Um, anything else you want to say? We can talk about stage, but we'll have a whole no, video. No, I think we should talk about it. Yeah. 
So anyway, we'll be kind of with this one. Again, we tell you there's a lot of things to talk about, about the championship, and there's a lot of other things that we want to talk about in general. Uh, but there is not enough days. And if we put the video every day, we will go crazy. Uh, so we will put them separately. Okay. You get to see it. You can, you know, uh, ask some questions and we can answer them, and etc., etc. And comment. And comment about it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.